All right, traders. George here, just looking at some stocks, doing a little homework, and thought I would uh, just show you what I'm looking at. Uh, before that, though, a little peek here at the S&P. As you know from the last video, I've been expecting some downside, and we're starting to see more of a follow-through in that regard. Where we are right now, Monday, Globex, 1814.50 for the S&P E-mini. Look to the left. That was an area of prior resistance in the 10, 12, 13s. And we've tested that zone here initially as support. We'll see what happens tomorrow. If we start breaking below this area here, uh, we've got the round number of 1800, which is obviously an important one psychologically. Below that, we're looking to get down to about 1780 and below that at about 1760, just for some key round numbers to look at. If for some reason the bulls can start to push this thing up, watch for price to cross over about 1820 to regain this floor, and we could see about a 10 point pop to move up to the ceiling of the next DSR level. So the main thing I'm looking at here is are we going to get a follow through yes or no and we can't go lower unless we pass this zone here. So really about the 1805 to 1810 zone is the area to watch for more strength to the downside that is if price breaks below. All right so that's a peek at the S&P. Here's a few stocks. All right this is Twitter. Uh, obviously IPO recently made some new structure lows went on a real steep rally, a bit of a fade, and then an even steeper rally. Steep ascents just don't last. And when that steep uptrend line was broken, a sharp sell-off, outside return, and then a retest of those lows breaking below, look to the left. We've got an area of support here that's maybe giving a bit of a cushion to this move here. RSI is actually building a bit of divergent uh, bullishness here. And we've got a little support, let's call it at uh, 56. We moved up about 5 plus percent from that level and faded back about 4 or 5 percent. Um, so we're at 58.19s right now. I actually like this for a uh, long play here, but a few things need to be considered. One is if we break below this area here, uh, just a couple bucks lower to test this swing and below that, look out. Okay, we've gone up quite a bit here. But if this area here can hold, we do have white candles despite the fade recently coming off a black tip and turning point here, but we have a divergent RSI building below. We still have white candles. We're finding some support here and maybe even making a bid for somewhat of a compound bottom here a little bit higher, and that is watch for the floor of this DSR level to be broken to the upside. Won't take much for that to happen, and you'll easily see a 5% pop above this $61 level here. Then we really go back into an area that's much more wide open. Where we had prior support here at about 64 would be the initial target I would look at. Then we have 67, we have about 71, and then up to 74. So pretty much the key structure points on the way up are the targets that I'd look at. The transition between 60 to 70 is pretty wide open. I call that an air pocket. It makes price move quickly through it. You can see down, up, down, and if the bulls catch fire here, you could see a quick move from about 61 plus up into the $70 zone very quickly. And that's one I'm looking to see if it'll materialize. Right now, we need to see a little bit more strength. It is just below these support swings here. RSI is at 45.16. You see RSI over 50. That would be another signal that we're going to be moving up even more. All right, that's Twitter. All right, Goldman Sachs. I mentioned in the room last week, watch for a fade in the S&P. NASDAQ, Dow, and specifically that I like Goldman Sachs as a short candidate when the markets are correcting on a daily basis. It almost always moves at least a dollar when things start cooking to the downside. And for you larger account traders trading thousand share blocks of Goldman Sachs, you move a dollar, you get a thousand bucks very quickly. And you can see here rejecting this new DSR level up at the top, RSI breaking below 50 and candles reverting black and it's had a good three dollar move uh, least from that area look to the left here we've got a prior resistance here at about 171s or so some sideways chop on the attempted breaks above here finally a very strong move up this will be an important area to watch if we move down to about 171 will we hold or break below if we start breaking below and closing below 170, we're likely going to be moving down to about 165, let's call it. Goldman Sachs approaching oversold here, but a real good fade. As I showed you the setup earlier um, last week, 
and moving pretty well in favor there. That's Goldman Sachs. Uh, this is Whole Foods on the daily right now. I had a good pop over this uh, $57 area here, RSI over 50 white candles, and then the breakout. And it went on a pretty good move, turning point to black tip, at a compound DSR, puts in a double top, and then it gaps down. Um, it's broken below 57, tried to break above, couldn't hold it. It had a little minor support area here at about 55. That gave way and led to a several dollar move down. Uh, about $50 is the is the floor here. So this break below here, a good short, moving a couple dollars in favor already. We're approaching oversold right now, and we're at a key uh, prior support area. That's what I get on the daily here, okay? Now, let's move that over. Just to give you a more refined view here on the 60-minute chart, uh, we're clearly below the most recent DSR levels on the 60-minute chart. You saw on the daily that $50 is a relevant point. That's another 5% lower than where we are. With uh, further weakness from Whole Foods, we could see a move down to 50, and that would be an area to watch for a key bounce. If not, it could have some significant further downside if it breaks below 50. However, if for some reason in the middle of outer space here we start to move up, watch for a rejection or not at $55. So if we start to move up, we'll go up another 4 or 5%, will we reject this zone or will the bulls retake this zone? If they do and start trading and closing above about 55.50, then they've pretty much moved back into this channel here and move up to about 59 plus. Uh, for Whole Foods, I want to see more commitment from either camp here. I want to see the bulls come back in and rescue this thing and get it over 55.50 and then see it pop up. Or I want to see the bears step on it more, drive it down another 5% and then see what happens at 50. If it looks like we're getting signals to go long at 50, that's what you do. If it breaks below, that could be leading to some much, much lower uh, price points. And on to Celgene, one of my favorite stocks here. I was actually long this and had to scramble to get out of it today. It broke to some new highs, uh, just cleared 174 and started selling off pretty quickly. As soon as it broke back below the floor of this DSR level, I was out. It actually had some pretty significant downside after that. And now it's pulled back to about one, well, it pulled back into the 162s. But if you look to the left, between about 157 and about 161, there was sort of a battle of resistance, resistance, a gap up, support here, support there. So in this zone here, which is lower than where we've been so far, we could see a stronger bid for support. If we start to sell off more tomorrow, we move down. I want to watch this area here for a potential uh, long signal. Um, if we break below that area, we're likely moving down much lower. It could be another $15 lower to about 145s. Uh, another thing to watch here is if we move back up, will we reject again this zone here? Here on the daily chart, you can see there's a symmetrical double top. There's some divergence on RSI. There's a gap down on this side over here. And then as it returns back to this DSR, it just rejects it. Absolutely. It actually makes a lower low on this candle here. There's a macro uptrend line that would be hit at around 160, assuming we continue on at about this clip here. And that ties in with these zones that we just looked at on the 60-minute chart. And the last stock here is Merck. Uh, this is a classic cup and handle style pattern here, maybe a little bit uh, sharper pullback. But nevertheless, it rallied up, found resistance, pulled back a bit, consolidated, and broke out. Uh, call it $50 even for that breakout zone. It gapped up and just never looked back, up to 53.12s here. I would look for a pullback here to be a buyer. So if we start to see more of an erosion in the S&P uh, and some profit taking comes here, or look to be a buyer of this on a pullback. Another thing to watch is just the retracement of this candle in and of itself. The 618 retrace comes in at 51.8. So that would be a good spot to look to be a buyer if it happens to give that opportunity. That's what I'm looking at for a few stocks and the S&P. Uh, we'll see you back in the live room.